Hello everyone, Mary here. So if you've been to this channel before, you probably know that I use this space to share tips, ideas, recommendations for English teachers. So I have to tell you that this is not a video about teaching. Well, if you're a teacher, you can still watch it, but it's not aimed at helping teachers. But I couldn't resist making it. Cutting a long story short, I'm currently in Montreal, so I came all the way from Spain to Canada and I had thought nothing would shock me anymore because I've been to so many countries. And the truth is, once I got here, I was so surprised by some of the things that I saw here and I thought it would be very nice to share them with you. So if you are into traveling or maybe you just like to know, you know, different things about different countries, you might like my list. 10 things that shocked me about Canada. Well, first thing needs to be the milk in a bag. So I have to say that this was not a farce for me. I've seen this before in Brazil ages ago, but it really surprises me that people are still using it. So basically you have to buy a um, reusable pitcher and place an open bag inside. So like with a corner facing the poor spot. And some people are that this is kind of environmentally friendly because you don't have a lid. But at the same time, it can get a bit messy and also you cannot really recycle the plastic bag, so it's waste anyway. The second thing, and something that I still can't understand, so if you know the answer or if you are Canadian, please write in the comments below because I feel too silly to go to a shop and ask. So it's the fact that the stores, you know, the shops, they've got kind of a protective dark film on the glass. So I don't even know how to call it. It's kind of a blackout, but it's not that dark. But it's dark enough for you not to be able to see what is inside the shop from the outside. So like the first week I was here, I wasn't sure if I was going to the right place because I didn't know if the shop was a restaurant or a supermarket or I could not know because basically I could not see what was going on inside. So maybe this has something to do with the weather, the snow, you know, I'm just being silly here because maybe that is like a very logical reason. But for me, it was first because how can you not show what you've got on the display of the shop? You know, usually, usually shops, they want to show people what they've got so they can grab their attention and customers can get into the shop, but not the case here. So as you might know, French is also an official language in Canada, apart from English. But what I didn't know is that if you are trying to settle in Quebec, you can get paid to learn French. People here are super proud of their French heritage and they really want to give an incentive to immigrants to learn the language. So if you've got valid visa, work permit or study permit, you can just go to one of the centers with the classes, you know, in your neighborhood and you can take the lessons and you can claim financial aid. I've heard there are some people making $800 per month. I'm not really sure it's true because obviously I'm still, you know, getting to know the place, but apparently, yes, you do uh, have kind of a salary if you're studying French full time. So one thing that is not shocking because I kind of knew this before coming here is the cultural diversity, but it is a bit different from other places that I've been to. So, you know, that I lived in many places that are very culturally diverse, such as London or Sydney in Australia. But here it's a bit different, it's so beautiful because usually in most of the countries that I've lived in, you could see groups of Spaniards, groups of people from Pakistan, groups of Japanese people, and they were like interacting, you know, with each other, but not as much as here. So here you see people, they keep their traditions, they keep their customs, they keep, you know, their way of being, but they are all mixed. So in the same group, you can find a person from India, another one from Japan, another one from Saudi Arabia and a Latin, and they are all dressed like in a very different way. And everyone is just so kind of happy together. And this leads me to another point, supermarkets from different countries. So I've seen this before, obviously, in loads of countries, but here's a bit special. You can see, for example, a big Thai supermarket, but it's not big. It's huge and you go to the place and there are 100% Thai products and people there they are 100% Thai so you just you don't feel you are in Canada anymore you just feel you are in Thailand which is amazing because I love Thai food and then at the same time you can just cross the street and there is an African supermarket so everything there is African and even the song you know that they play is African and every customer there is African so you just feel you are in a different place so going around your neighborhood you can maybe feel you've been 
into five or six countries, you know, like in the space of two hours. So shocking thing number six is that um, streets are not as clean and as perfect as I expect them to be. Because yeah, we do have this view of Canada being like spotless, you know, just the cleanest place and perfect. And I must say the most places I've been to, yes, they are like that. They are, you know, kept in very good conditions. But this is not the reality for the whole place, the whole country. So as you can see, this is my current house and this is my current street. So yes, it is not like the most perfect one, but well, it's okay anyway. What also surprised me was to see loads of food banks with services available to everyone. Because I know that in Spain, if you are financially struggling and let's say that you need some help with food for your kids, you do have to go through such a long process and have a social worker assigned to you and show your paperwork. And sometimes there is a waiting list and maybe they're going to help you once per month for once every three months. And apparently here, from what I heard and from what I, I researched on the internet, if you need to get some kind of cheap food, you can just go there, even if you have a tourist visa, and you can just show them your passport, your address, and you can get some food for free. I know that there are some places that is not free, but food is extremely cheap and you can choose it. So it's maybe $5, $7. And obviously you don't have to take advantage of this service. It's just for people that really need it, but it's such a beautiful thing. It's so accessible to everyone. So I think this is just fantastic. Another very nice thing is that tap water is safe to drink, but better than that, what was a pleasant surprise for me is that you can find public drinking fountains everywhere. So you don't have to be carrying your bottle, like if you go to the playground with the kids or if you go running, you don't have to be carrying stuff because you can just stop by and drink some potable water. So one thing that I've heard before is like Canada is prepared for winter, but I lived in the UK for many, many years and in Ireland as well, and I was like, how can a country be ready for winter, you know? Because I was freezing in London and I was freezing in the south of England, even like the sunny days. Well, we didn't really have loads of sunny days, but the houses are really prepared for winter. That's so true because all the houses, they've got like double glazing and the doors as well, they've got some kind of protection. I don't even know how to explain it. But the fact is I got here in summer and we were boiling inside the house because these houses are made for winter. So this is an amazing fact because obviously I'm not really like looking forward to winter, but I can rest assured that I'm not going to be dying or like paying loads of money for heating because I know the house is kind of safe for me to be, to be here during the cold months. And well, um, a very irrelevant information, but I cannot stop thinking about them because they are super funny, is the sockets. They've got the shape of a scary face and they do have sockets in the bathroom, you know, it's not like the UK. So sometimes, you know, if I go to the toilet, I just can't stop looking at them. And sometimes it makes me laugh and sometimes it makes me feel like they are kind of watching me. So yeah, this is a bit stupid, but this is something different. Well, and that was it. And I promise you come back here with more teaching videos very soon. Okay guys, so thanks for watching.